So the, how, how does one get beyond this, right? I mean, in this case, to the UK government's, you know, to the Home Office credit, it, it did make the decision to, to, to rescind, you know, this visa algorithm process for visa applications, that is, before even a legal process uh, was begun on it. But nevertheless, uh, I would imagine then algorithms in use around the world are, do still have this sort of negative side to them. Yeah, so the, the Home Office only really um, steps back away, away from it because of the actions of campaigners who highlighted these kind of biases and uh, asked them to stop using it. The way you get around it is, like Melissa said, you can look at the data and, and consider whether there are things uh, within the data set which are already biased and are there ways to balance that out. Another option is to consider the, the context in which you're deploying that algorithm. So let's say for the criminal justice um, examples, uh, what, are, what are you actually trying to achieve um, by using this um, new form of technology? So are you just simply trying to get um, costs down? Are you trying to get more effective outcomes and then work backwards from that? And in some cases, it might be, be it might be better to just not use these algorithms at all because they might be proven to be ineffective in your goal and also inaccurate. One example I'm looking at at the moment is um, facial recognition technology, and this is uh, basically cameras that can detect wanted criminals within a crowd. And one of the uh, issues there is that some of these technologies don't actually work as well on people with darker skin colors. Right. Um, and therefore, you might actually get in ineffective outcomes. You might be missing uh, guilty people that you want to catch, and you also might be flagging up innocent people as criminals.